this is going to be more of like a, a live stream esque video, just me talking about software topics and generally some of the resources that I look for as I'm continuing my studying of software engineering. So, .NET or Microsoft publishes um, several ebooks. One of them is this really good one, and it's Containerized Docker Application Lifecycle with Microsoft Platform and Tools. So I actually printed it out, and you can see it there. And I keep them. I keep a list of resources in a in a binder, kind of like this, um, where I actually will print out uh, ebooks online and just have them in paper, just because. I just don't like to read stuff on screens. I don't really, it kind of hurts my eyes just because, you know, the whole day I'm working on this setup here with my displays. So I don't really want to go back and um, read something online again and have to just like sift through and like ebook and like page through digital pages. So I really prefer to print it out. And it kind of works too because I print out other papers and things that work out too. So I just kind of can put them in the binder. Um, another one is containerized.net applications. They, it's a really, really solid ebook that uh, Microsoft has on their .NET documentation. And I didn't print out a lot of this because it's so long, but I printed out like I would say a half of it. And honestly, this is probably one of the best published books about containerized.net web applications that you can read. If you haven't read through the ebook, I would highly recommend it. Um, I can put a link to it, I guess, just because it's it's an ebook on their documentation. Um, again, I just I print it out here and I staple it together. Um, but this is one book that I will go back and and like reference and reread several times, uh, just because it touches on basically all the topics. And if you couple the the containerized.net ebook with the deploying more of like the DevOps ebook I showed you before. Those two, that's like that. That is a lot of information on like the whole or most of the the software development lifecycle. Uh, because one of the trickier aspects of software is the deployment side of things, and it really depends where you work. You know, as to whether or not you're going to gain exposure in that area, because you can work at one place that all you may do is maybe just add features to an existing application, and you can do that for years. But then you might move to a place where you're more focused on deployments. So you have existing applications, but you might work on the uh, whatever the deployment pipeline is, whether it's you know AWS, Azure, you know GitHub Actions, whatever it may be. Um, or you may have the jobs where it's kind of like you do everything, um, and it really depends where you work. I'm sure that if you've switched jobs. Um, once or twice you've seen some of this before um, and it makes it challenging you know as you approach software engineering because it, it, it kind of like forces you to study everything about it and honestly DevOps is a job in and of itself so you know we're, we're I think we as developers are faced with the task of what do I want to specialize in and what's the base level of knowledge that I have to have over like everything to to get by? And I'm kind of in the mentality of like I need to know how to do like deployment life cycles, like how do I, how do I deploy my application? How do I set up environments, environment variables, um, and everything like that? And but I don't really want to. I can't say that I want to specialize in that because I don't really see myself moving into cloud ops cloud operations engineering that much cloud engineers there's a lot of names for that job um but i think we need to have some understanding of it but it's like i don't know sometimes in the back of my head it feels like the level of knowledge we have to have over so many topics is just increasing as the job market becomes uh, more and more competitive which is fine but it just means that we'll have to you know, we have to stay up on uh, topics. So these books I found to be really helpful for staying up on those things. Um, when I was in school, when I was in school, I took a class on enterprise architecture, and we read this one book, Web Services, Service-Oriented Architectures and Cloud Computing. And this was like a, 
this was like kind of like a primer to a lot of those those topics of like you know what is uh, what is service uh, oriented architecture to begin with what does it mean to have decoupled systems uh, what does it mean to have independent services and not have everything in one uh, in one service or monolith um, I, I can't say that I was overall that much of a fan of the class looking back on it when I was in school but I think that now just having more exposure into different aspects of software engineering I think I can appreciate the class more just because I think I understand what it was trying to do and just trying to get you to think about how do you look at software as like loosely coupled systems that you should be able to plug and play so microservices basically um, there was some other stuff talking about you know XML HTTP rest and, and just like basic things like that um, another book that we we kind of hit on um, actually I want to show this one first so this is one book that I, I studied in class as well um, just kind of a your typical introduction to ASP.NET Core MVC um, it's pretty outdated now so I can't say that I recommend it but um, that's something that we did in class so if you're you know approaching school or you're in school or you're looking for a book to study honestly once you pick your specialty and like which technology technologies you're going to use you just have to at some point go through a tutorial book whether you want to read or not it's just going to help you get foundational things over the the language and framework that you end up picking um, when I was looking around for a job um, a few years ago at one at one point in time I, I picked up this book about SQL um, not because I felt like I was like super lacking in SQL SQL is one of those things if you've worked in software it's kind of like assumed that you know SQL but you're not you know you have to know it when you need it kind of thing you know what I mean like databases unfortunately have been almost relegated to another area of ownership of the full stack developer and that that you know that the, <laughs> the amount of ownership full stack developers have now I think is too large because it, it, nobody's able to specialize anymore so if you're fortunate to work with the database team that's super good but if you are in that full stack developer umbrella and you have databases under your 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 level your ownership um sql might be something that you have to really focus on and get better at especially as more frameworks are kind of moving to uh just using raw sql again in their applications um it's i think it'd be pertinent to to know like at least advanced things in sql to make sure that you can construct joins and uh, you know, explain your SQL so you're not doing full table scans all the time. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but you know, and, and and then you can get into the more opinionated things of like, okay, when do you use views? Um, how do you how do you split or how do you treat date timestamps? Uh, what do you do with lookup tables? And that's you know, you, you start getting to the more opinionated side of of SQL, but just just going through a uh, uh, just a general reference is is helpful um, I, I at least I think so going through this really helped me um, and it's something that I kind of just flip back and reference because I, I you know I don't use SQL like a ton but like every when I need to know it it's just helpful just to have that base level of understanding um, there's a couple other things that I wanted to talk about as far as kind of instructional material that I looked at either when I was going through school um, or after you know in a job setting here but this is like a classic C++ book right like if you've if you're in class you'll probably go through just like a, a borderline like C++ manual and that can be super defeating <laughs> like those books are not fun they're not exciting um, they're not unfortunately people I think lose a lot of like motivation to learn programming just because they kind of get burnt out going through those huge 
programming manuals and things like that because they kind of lose sight as to what they can do with it. Um, you know, because they don't have much, they don't have any energy to do that just because they're trying so hard to learn and memorize the syntax and 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 pointers and every all the random stuff like that. Um, so if you can get through, if you can get through the more like the manual books, you know, you'll be you'll be well on your way. Um, yeah, there, there's a couple other things that I want to show, but honestly, I'm I'm just trying to keep this super relaxed. Honestly, I should probably put probably put this stuff more in a live stream format, um, but I, I just don't have a stream. I just don't have like the streaming stuff set up. So uh, one one other thing that I wanted to talk about too, that now now that I'm thinking about it, is just the fact that you you can pick your specialty. Uh, so it's like once you have that base level of like programming experience and you start to look at the job market you, you'll begin to see that you at some point you have to pick a specialty as to like what technology stack you're going to use whether it's you know whether it's .NET, it's it's java um it's ios development it's uh android development at some point you're going to really have to have to pick and then kind of refine your search from there uh, I say that because I found that to be the easiest way to get a job and to start applying for jobs because originally um, originally I was looking for an iOS developer position like way back in, in college um, and I almost got an internship as an iOS developer but I, I, I was like I was the second I got to this, uh, the final interview and it was me and another guy and they went with the other the other person. Um, but I, I, I still continued after that making my own apps and things. Um, but I realized that finding a job in iOS development right out of college was going to be pretty tricky or pretty tough. Um, and I wasn't, I had a couple interviews for iOS developer positions and I just didn't do well in the interview. And I just realized that I just not finding a lot of opportunity for, for this specific job. Um, so then I started to look at, okay, maybe I have to look at uh, .NET specific jobs. And what I realized is that there's a lot more .NET jobs than there are iOS jobs. So I kind of went with .NET and I kind of just at that point picked my specialty and I just kind of threw myself into the .NET world and learned as much as I can. And also helped because it kind of coincided with taking web development in school as well, uh, which really helped. So then from there I was able to get... Uh, more of like a, a formalized internship with the company that um, they use .NET, so that helped. Um, and, and I noticed too in .NET, it seems like a lot of the big, like bigger companies use .NET. So like I know like a lot of insurance companies do, um, which they're always hiring. So if you can get into like a bigger company with .NET as like an intern and then just stay there that seems to be a pretty easy way to get your foot in the door for like software engineering stuff if you're interested in that um obviously you can pick like java you can try to specialize just solely in in javascript but again javascript is, is sometimes it, it gets funneled into that full stack developer role a lot of places i've seen you know require some level of understanding of some javascript framework whether that's React, Angular, Vue, vanilla JavaScript, whatever it may be, there's kind of an assumption that you have experience or you know are familiar with one of those frameworks on top of knowing a backend language. Um, that's just kind of what I think what's happening as the labor market changes, as job as the job market changes. Um, it seems like more and more skills are being placed under that umbrella of full stack engineer, uh, which I guess is fine. But again, like kind of what we were talking about, it just kind of places the responsibility on us to make sure that we're learning those things. Um, it's not hard to get experience in those, like especially the internship route, right? Because a company is going to be using some framework for the front end and some you know, framework for the back end, that automatically gives you that experience that you can put on your resume and just do personal projects and study and then you should be able to get a job no problem um, but again i studying and personal projects is a huge part I, I spent years working on personal projects in school 
because I knew that I might be possibly at a deficit because I didn't do computer science, I wanted to make sure that I supplemented that with personal projects. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that's just my thoughts about it, the whole thing. Um, I think it really just comes down to just try to read, I feel like, as much as you can. Um, because once you get the first one, all you need is one, right? Just send out a ton of applications. All you need is one. Once you get one, you're set. You just, you, you'll be, you'll be good, right? So, um, anyway, this is like my live stream, if you want to call it that. Um, I don't know if a live stream would be something of interest on this channel. Sometimes I run out of the daily stand-up updates I can give. Um, I have to I have to set up a couple of things for like uh, the code review series we have going, and there's a couple other things I want to do. So, um, what time is it? Not yeah. Well, yeah, I think we call it a day on this one. But again, this could be this could have been a live stream. Maybe that's what we'll do. So anyway, I'll see you guys later.